CataractCoach.com, solar eclipse sign indicates zonulopathy. So when you see the sign, yes, think of the solar eclipse, but remember to prepare for zonular loss and or weakness here. So here you can see the patient, and this is a patient with a traumatic cataract. Solar eclipse means when you have that little sliver of light coming through. Here's the patient pre op slit lamp, brunescent cataract, traumatic cataract. And you look here, look at the top of your screen from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Looks like a bit of a solar eclipse there, right? Yeah, that's light from the red reflex coming around the lens capsular bag equator. So that's an area that you may have some focal zonulopathy here. Be careful putting tripan blue dye in there because if there's a big focal gap, you could get tripan blue dye going into the vitreous cavity, and that's going to lose your red reflex immediately. So here, luckily, the tri tripan blue dye stayed in the anterior chamber of the eye, stayed in the lens capsule. And you can see a surgeon here sitting superiorly but operating temporally here, using forceps marking off to get a good capsular excess. Oh, look at the wrinkling there. Those wrinkling, that indicates zonular weakness. So maybe this wasn't a traumatic cataract. Maybe this is global zonulopathy. So despite having that uh, wrinkling there, you're still able to complete the rexus here. Now the question is, is it more challenging if you have a patient with global zonulopathy or you have a patient with traumatic focal zonulopathy, right? Because you may do a little bit different approach in each. There's a beautiful looking rexus there, five millimeters bang on the, on the nose, on the dot. Now let's see some hydrodissection here. And... For a case like this, you want to be very gentle when you're operating in the capsular bag because you don't want to put force on whatever zonal support is left. So here's some broad hydrodissection, good fluid wave coming across. Look at that. It rotates. It spins. You know my favorite saying, if it does not spin, you will not win. This one's definitely spinning, so you're going to win this one. Coming in here with the FACO probe in the right hand, to the chopper here on the left. And uh, it's interesting, I'm used to sitting on the side when I operate temporarily, but this surgeon sitting superiorly. Obviously, anything works, whatever's comfortable for you. And let's see, here we go. Going to try to occlude and perhaps do a chop. Looks like a horizontal chopper here, Nagahara style. Yup, so buzzing with the nucleus. Chopper goes around the lens capsular bag equator. There we go, around the edge of the nucleus within the capsular bag. And now buzzing to the nucleus again. Here's the chopper going around the nucleus equator. Yup, there it is. Boom. So yeah, the entire time, if I wasn't clear, the chopper's in the capsular bag. And now removing this piece, the first piece comes up. And what you, what you look at is, yeah, look at that. Look at the capsular rexus. Why is the rexus moving? Well, it didn't move before. Well, because the nucleus that was in the bag was holding the capsule open. And now as you take out nuclear pieces, you may get collapse in the areas of zonulopathy. So now let's take a look here, putting in some viscoelastic in the bag. Yeah, you probably want to put some support there. Maybe a capsule, look, maybe like this, a CTR. So here comes a capsule tension ring using an injector here. And make sure you have enough of a gap there with the viscoelastic to give it an easy insertion and get that CTR in. It's partially in the bag now, and there's the end outside the eye. Get that last eyelid in, get this tra traveled around nicely. There you go. Now that's going to help give broader support and keep the capsular bag equator um, open. And you'll keep the capsular bag basically expanded as you remove the nucleus here. So that capsular tension ring is pushing outwards on the equator of the capsular bag. So even when you empty the bag by removing the cataract, you have support in that one area. So that was a very smart move to put the CT on at the very beginning here. That's going to make life a lot easier. And with a brunescent cataract like this or dense cataract, there's not a whole lot of cortex anyway, so you don't have to worry about cortex being trapped. Now buzzing here with the faker probe again, a nice, nice horizontal chop, cleanly done. Yeah, there's a good amount of lens density there. And here, coming out pretty easy. Look at that. CDE energy is pretty low. I also have tried this new machine, and I have no affiliation with this company, but this uh, new FACO machine, I found I put in about half the amount of CDE compared to what I was expecting. So very interesting advances in technology is coming our way. And buzzing here into the nucleus with the FACO probe again, getting that last piece out. And now because the CTR is in place, you won't have a floppy bag, right? The danger if you just don't have the CTR and, and you had that weak, weak bag and the zonulopathy is that you could get a lot of that floppy bag coming up towards the vaco tip. So a little uh, eye removal now, getting the cortex out. There you go. And that looks pretty clean. Now, overall, it looks like pretty good support. I don't think you need to do anything else other than that CTR. And if it is traumatic, hopefully the patient won't, won't sustain any further trauma. Fill in the capsule bag into this glass. Here comes the eye well. That's a nice looking case. That's really great. And if you're keeping track, yes, we sped the video up a little bit. Don't worry about that. We just want to be efficient and respect your time as a Cadre Coach fan. So again, think about solar eclipse sign. If you see the solar eclipse, this is something to think about. You're probably going to have some zonulopathy in that one area 
or maybe even more. And remember, check out our sister channel, retinarounds.com, an amazing resource. I promise you'll love it.